Brothers and sisters, grace to and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. How do you make sure that what you plant grows into what you want it to grow into? What an awful sentence grammatically. After I wrote that and saved it and messed with it and printed it off and I read it again, I thought, oh, we, we record these services and we send them out to people that can't make it here and my mom's on that list. She's a grammar fanatic. She is going to chew on me. So if we're recording this one and sending it to her, I'm sorry, Mom, but I had to read it that way. I'm not much of a green thumb, so a text like this makes me shudder. The gospel usually does make me shudder, but it also brings me great comfort. In the midst of it all, let's talk about how we see ourselves in this text, how we see others in this text, how we see God in this text as seed, soil, or sower. And to add to that, how do we talk about what it takes to fertilize the whole thing? Now, I was going to entitle this sermon, God as Fertilizer, but I thought i got to be here longer before you all will forgive that little saying. I know a little about making things grow, but I'm not much of an expert. That job belongs to my youngest daughter. She just finished up two years at science school in Wapiton. Now she's going up to NDSU to go into natural resources management, and that girl can make things grow. Let me tell you about that. When we lived in Wapiton, right in front of our house, I was gonna put a patio, which as it turns out was against the rules for that addition, but I didn't look at the rules. What are you gonna do? And they never did make me take it out, but anyway, I was gonna dig out this patio. So the guy across the street was a construction guy, had a skid steer loader, which was really nice because he came over and he was gonna dig out this patio for me. The alternative was a shovel. That didn't. Well, anyway, we won't go there yet. So he made one pass with the skid steer. So now I started, got to finish. He backed up the skid steer loader and blew a hydraulic hose. I felt about that tall. I was like, wow, this guy's doing me a favor. He blows a hydraulic hose deep inside his skid steer loader. He limps this thing back home, sticks it in his garage, didn't come back. Oh, that's all right. We were still friends. But now I had to finish, so out came the shovel. Anyway, fast forward to a year from then, I have a patch of ground next to this patio about 12 or 14 inches around that was full of hydraulic fluid. Nothing grew there. So I get some tomato plants. I'm going to plant tomato plants. I can tell you about that later. That turned out very well for a guy that can't grow stuff. But anyway, you know those little six packs of the tomatoes? See, I'm not a gardener. I don't know the terminology. Forgive me. Just put up with my... You get those little six packs and they, they all have little tomato plants in them. And one of the plants... One of those six packs I got from a lady had this little shoot in it with two leaves coming out. And I said, that is not a tomato plant. And the lady says, nope, I think it's an American elm. It was a tree. I thought, wow, that's fantastic. It's about a half inch tall. It's a tree. So I went home. I told my daughter, look at this one. It's a tree. I had no intention of planting said tree. I came home from work. She had all the tomato plants planted. And I said, what would you do with the tree? Put it right there, Dad. She's about that tall. Put it right there, Dad, right in the middle of all that hydraulic fluid. I thought, ugh, it's never going to grow there. Shows how much I knew. Six years later, it was taller than the house. Lush, full, beautiful tree. We had to trim it back because it was growing and touching the neighbor's house. It was just this wonderful tree. She would stake it and make sure it grew straight. And she would trim it to make sure that it was getting all the nutrients it needed. And she watered it and fed it. And I thought... That shows you what I know. Who would think a tree would go on that point? But that's just the point of a text like this. Who determines the parameters of growth in this parable? Well, the answer better be God. Otherwise, we have things to talk about. Find me when we're done. We'll explain that. God determines almost all of it. So this here is a picture of, you see that little round thing in the corner? Yeah, that would be my cowboy hat. Um, <laughs> It's a great hat. It goes all the way out to my shoulders. I'll wear it on the canoe trips. You'll see, a, you'll see a picture of it. That is a picture from Voyager National Park on the northern side of Lake Superior, almost up to International Falls. It's essentially a lake system in the middle of mountain ranges. There's no real dirt there. It's all rocks. There were 16 of us in one 36-foot canoe. Talk about God. We'll talk about that later, too. It's mountaintops, rocky mountaintops. Who would think that anything would grow on a rocky mountaintop? But as you can see from that picture, things are growing. It's lush. 
what we can't make that stuff grow how does it do that we can look at the terrain and think nothing will grow there but as you can see we are proven wrong I'm not saying a person will be real successful in planting a corn crop there I don't think you want to farm this land but there's indeed something growing there life is present it is beautiful we look at soil and determine in our own heads whether it's good or not. We make a quick judgment about whether said soil will produce a crop. We make a quick judgment about what kind of crop that will be. Will it be a bumper crop or just sporadic? Are you in the Red River Valley of Eastern North Dakota where you can get 80, 90 bushel wheat? Or are you up by Crosby, North Dakota where it's a good year if you get 50? Some of it depends on how we work the soil, but how did the trees get on the rock the answer lies in the lichen that grow on the rock over time see that little green stuff now keep in mind those rocks are older than man but the lichen grow on there it leads to something called sphagnum moss which is thick soft moss felt a lot like a mattress and if you can imagine we had to sleep on that stuff that's sphagnum moss felt pretty good it catches the seeds as they come by in the wind and it helps them grow the roots of the trees shoot out horizontally along that rocky surface. The only problem is that's not very strong. So when the wind comes along and blows those trees over, they look a lot like, you know, a tree laying on its side with the roots all up out of the ground. That was a tree. There's a tree going past that. Wow, that doesn't seem very strong or wonderful then. But the thing is... The bottom of that, where the roots are still in the ground, is enough to nourish that tree, and that tree is beautiful and just as majestic as ever, just growing horizontally. Isn't God amazing? That's the point. This parable is one I like to think centers on God's activity in spreading the word. At some point, I think we are all either seed, soil, or sower. Depends on what God is calling us to do right then. Who God is calling us to be right then. In this parable, this sower is throwing seeds all over the place. Imagine him walking down the sidewalk in front of that church just tossing seed. I don't know, that seems kind of not a very efficient way to throw seeds around or sow. But maybe that's how it was done back then. I don't know. If we see ourselves as sowers in this parable like that, the ones that are spreading God's word, maybe we should be the ones that are spreading it everywhere and not be concerned about where we think it should go. From the sower standpoint in the story, we should just put it out there and let God take care of what happens to it. We might not even be around to see the result of the sowing. And maybe that's okay if we remember that God's the gardener. God's making that stuff grow. Okay, that's the sower. What about the soil? If we see ourselves as soil in this parable, are we good soil? Can we even be good soil? I don't think soil can be good on its own. And maybe that's a good parallel. Maybe that's familiar. We can't make ourselves be good soil any more than the soil can make itself be good. God makes the soil good. He makes us good soil as well. We can certainly fertilize our gardens and fields in an effort to make the ground produce its best. We could do that. I'm not sure that we can create good soil in all instances. No matter how much we fertilize those rocks in northern Minnesota, I don't think you're going to grow a bumper crop in fertile soil on top of those rocks. God makes that lichen grow. So we don't hear much in the story about the seed, though, quality seed. We know from Jesus' explanation that it represents the Word of God. We get that. That's spelled out in the text. But in my experience, there have been good ways to spread the Word and bad ways. And is there such a thing as putting bad seed into good soil and having it grow? Okay, so see, I didn't know, right? Because, again, I'm not much of a gardener. I'm just not. But somebody from the 830 service on the way out said, Sure, you can put bad seed in good soil and it'll grow. <laughs> Yes, plays right into what I'm saying. I love it. I'm not sure that I can say whether the way a person tells the gospel is good or bad without falling into that judgment spot. But what I can say is that when a person uses the word, 
to condemn or coerce. It's probably not how it was meant to be used. Jesus preached unity and love. And if there's somebody out there spreading the word and preaching exclusion and hate, I think that is bad seed. We have to listen to Jesus if we're going to be good seed, soil, or sowers. We are all of them at some point. I'm not very apologetic that I work with youth in this place. After all, that's what you called me to do. So almost everything I do has some sort of youth thing to it. Just ride with me, people, because that's who I am. So when I hear a text like this, my mind wanders to the world of today's youth. Right? So, good seed, soil, sowing. Today we are baptizing little Landon in just a few minutes. That's soil. Little Landon is soil. We are the sowers right here. Every time we come in contact with those kids, we are sowing seed. How will we sow? How good is our seed? Well, if God's with us and he promises he'll never leave us, then we sow with confidence that our seed is the best there is. We have a bunch of kids leaving on trips soon. This Friday, the first one leaves to El Salvador. About ten kids, five adults will travel down there and be sowers of seed. Will they sow on good soil? Who knows? Will the seed take root, sprout up, grow and bear fruit? Who knows? But we don't sow because we know the results that we envision the results to be. We don't set that. We sow with the trust it's God that makes the seed fall where God wants it to fall. It's God that makes it grow and bear fruit. It's God that brings the crop to its fullness and invites us into the harvest. We just play our part and let God do the rest. Sure makes it sound easy, doesn't it? You know, the greatest and hardest thing about the seed of the gospel is it is just that easy. When we go out to sow and eventually come back and reap, we do so because God is leading and creating. God's making that stuff grow. It's not our doing. We live our part, be it seed, soil, or sower. And even when, like those that are traveling down south, way south, or out into the wilderness of Wisconsin, we don't get to stick around to see the results. We know the results will be what God intends the results to be. We sinful people get in the way. We human beings are sinful and we get in the way every now and then. Maybe I should have asked along with seed, soil, or sower and fertilizer whether or not we were weeds from time to time, right? Can we be that too? Can we be those thorns that choke out the word of God? Well, next week you'll hear about weeds, so I didn't want to step on that because that's next week's text is about weeds. So come back and hear that. That'll be fun. But even weeds can be useful. And I say that because when I was about 10 years old, my dad's parents came to visit from Greece. My grandmother didn't speak any English, and Dean and I didn't speak any Greek. So mom and dad went to work, and there we were with my grandmother. Yeah, it was nervous, let me tell you. We didn't know what we were doing. And she came walking out of the house with those little steel bowls, you know, that you put stuff into, and she started cutting dandelions out of the yard. And my brother and I thought, what is she doing? She turned them into a salad. And it was amazing. So the next time you go killing your dandelions, think about that. You could turn them into a salad. I don't know the recipe, so don't ask. I'll have to get it someday. I don't know what she did, but it was really good. And I thought that we're eating dandelions. God determines the use of the crop, doesn't he? I mean, even God can use weeds from time to time. So may you always live in the confidence that whether your seed, soil, sower, fertilizer, weeds, whatever, that you are growing and bearing the fruit of the gospel. And may you water your seed with prayer and always trust that God grows good stuff even when the only thing around is those rocks in northern Minnesota. Thanks be to God. Amen.